because I'm, I'm, I'm not particularly, what would you say, impressed by what he's done on the sex business front. It, it seems to me a bit on the pimpy side, let's say. And I'm not a great admirer of pimps. Pimpy side. Pimpy side. There's an interview between Tucker Carlson and Andrew Tate that's getting all sorts of attention. It has uh, 25, 30 million views over at Twitter. It's the biggest episode of Tucker's show that he's done on Twitter for probably a couple of months. And, um, and it's fascinating. It's really, really long. It's like two and a half hours long. So we uh, pulled a few of the clips to analyze them. Uh, here's a little bit of it. One thing that I would never do is smear some honey on my balls, get naked, and run around the pee beehive screaming that which doesn't kill you makes you stronger. These are things I wouldn't do. And in the spirit of this, one thing I wouldn't do also is listen to two and a half hours of Tucker Carlson and the Romanian pimp slow stroke each other and cackle. You know, that sounds like a nightmare. And so instead of it, I decide to hop on on the Ben Shapiro red pill train and see, see where it leads me. You may have heard the old expression, you can't cuck the tuck in relationship to Carlson Tucker. I mean, it, you know, it speaks to men's debating skills. You know, have you heard this? You can't cock the tuck. If you haven't, I do apologize for introducing it to your life. I sincerely apologize for that. However, the one person who it seems easy to cock is Ben Shapiro. Now, you may or may not have heard the expression audience capture, but it just basically means that a person is captured by their audience to express opinions they otherwise won't and or you know concealing their concealing their opinions because they're afraid of their audience they're they're afraid of the spankaroo that happens if they actually express their true feelings and when it comes to this then ben shapiro is really the king of this of audience capture because everybody with a brain should know that ben shapiro hates donald trump he hates him you know but for all these four years he had to sort of Keep it mum, keep it quiet, keep it, keep it on the down low. And now it's quite clear he doesn't like um, Andrew Tate. He doesn't like the Romanian pimp. Because actually Ben Shapiro happens to live in a world where he didn't have any webcam girls, for example. I haven't heard on him explo exploiting cam, gir cam gir girls, Ben Shapiro. Um, OnlyFans exploiting some girls of OnlyFans, you know, giving the old kickback to Ben Shapiro. Those things just... Um, don't happen. And so as we're going to look at the segment, uh, at these bits of uh, video that Ben Shapiro was kind enough to compile, you look at him from a point of view of a hostage, of a point of view of somebody who um, is just afraid of a spanking. You always have to kind of, you know, very, very carefully beat around the bush, beat around the bush with this shit. So anyway, not, not always good on Ben Shapiro's red pill train. And as we hop onto it, you know, notice the tragedy, notice the pathos, notice the Legos and the Legos and the logos and the Legos and the logos. Right, my, fr my friends, let, let's get to it. It's a very uncertain situation to be picked up on just before New Year's Eve and thrown in a cell without charge. And I'm asking different prison guards and different prisoners, how long am I gonna be here? One person was like, I've been here two years. I was like, have you been charged? He goes, yeah, but I haven't gone to court yet. Like everyone's been there for years. I thought I was going to be there for years. And it certainly takes a mental toll on you. And, and I think jail is a different experience when you know you're innocent. So Andrew Tate's fanboys, you know, what do they say? Look at this guy. He's rich. Why would he be involved with this human smuggling with these webcam cam girls? What the fuck is the Romanian police thinking? You know, that this has to be a political hit. Because why would a millionaire concern themselves with having webcam girls, with having some woman imprisoned in their mansion? Like, what is this going on? Why? Why would Andrew Tate do that? But we really have to go deep into the psychology of the Romanian pimp in order to understand why a millionaire would do webcam girls and abuse women for no reason. And the reason for that is that this is the way he relates to women as property, as, some, as something he completely controls. Like, it's not like he was pimping women all this time and here he's gonna make a lot of money and just have a normal relationship. There is no normal relationship for him in the way we define it. 
I used sex as a tool to make women love me so they'd obey me and live in my house and make me money. That, that's what I wanted. So I was a pimp in that sense. It's kind of like, let's say if I was into consensual bondage. Now, I happen to not be in consensual bondage into, into it. However, let's say that I was. And then let's say I became a millionaire and somebody would say, well, Ivan, why are you into bondage? And I would say, well, that's the only way I can get off. It doesn't matter how much money he has. That's the only way he can get off. And that's why, you know, this guy who probably is a millionaire, you know, has some women who he forcing to do OnlyFans or cam girls. That's the only way he re uh, relates to women as a pimp, P-I-M-P. -P. You know, so he's a piece of shit. And that's, and that's, why, that's why he got arrested for it, even though it does seem to make no sense. What is the matrix? Good question. I guess some Americans call it the deep state. Pimpy side. But I like to look at it in a more global way. When I say the matrix, I think there are certain agendas which are being pushed. I think the media machine and the judicial systems of the world work together hand in hand. I think the goal is to control people's minds to a point where they don't discuss anything that's important. Now again, a lot of what he is saying right here is true, Andrew Tate. I mean, there is an overwhelming consensus between members of the media and members of the government and members of corporate America. And that's true globally as well. And, and they can create a narrative that just is not true. We saw this with the Trump-Russia narrative. We saw this with the idea that everyone, including small children, had to be vaxxed for COVID or everyone was going to die and all of the rest. You know, he, he's not wrong about that. Yeah, I think that he over attributes to the matrix. You see Ben Shapiro treading very, very carefully, <laughs> afraid of the old spankaroo. So in the world of pimps, as far as I understand it, there are three factors. One are the tricks, and these are the men who pay for sex. The other are whores who give, I'm sorry, I'm using it for, for sex workers, but you know what I mean. You know, the, one are the tricks, the men who give money to whores, and then the pimp who takes all the money, all the money from women and then periodically doles them out a little bit while keeping them in love with the pimp, submissive to the pimp. And so in this sense, the, the pimp is a kind of a superman, you know, who stands above the society, exploits this fundamental sexual desire and stands above it. And over time, I just build up this big, this big little empire of webcam girls. At one, one point, I had four locations, 75 girls working for me. I'd take around half of the money, around 50%. You take 50%. Around 50%. They thought they were on 50%. And I said that the disparity is because of taxes. He would just pay me a flat fee of 15 pounds an hour. We got to the point where we had these guys falling in love with my models. Serious, big time in love, right? Sending crazy money. And they were convinced they were going to meet the chick. This is almost where I kind of felt bad because they were like, can we meet? I've sent you $200,000. I had these guys selling their houses, life savings, loans, all of it to me. Give me it all. So that's actually the matrix that Tate is talking about. This is the matrix of the Romanian pimp. That is the foundation. You know, men who work nine to five are actually losers. Real men are those who like fuck their wives, etc. It's a completely antisocial idea. But when he has to do his interview thing as if he's applying for a job with some sort of a right-wing media, it only, it, then it becomes like this deep state and all this shit. No, it's, it's as simple as a pimp standing above society, being a parasite outside of society and flourishing with no work. And this is what you know you can get if you sign up for his stupid university. So yeah, on corporatetape.com I have my PhD program and that is a uh, PhD is a uh, pimp and hose degree that I'm um, clever. And that, clever. That, that, that teaches basically how I got girls, how I met girls, how I got girls to like me, how I got girls to fall in love with me to work on webcam for me. You've said depression isn't real or it's not as the way we describe depression isn't accurate. What, what do you think of depression? When I say depression isn't real, what I'm, that really upset the world, especially the liberals, because they all live on medication, right? When I say depression isn't real, I'm saying that because I don't believe in things that can take away power from me. If I believed in depression, I would have been depressed in jail. But I can't be depressed if I don't believe in it. If you don't believe in ghosts, how can you be haunted? You have two people in a, in a haunted house. One believes in ghosts, one doesn't. There's a knock in the night. One wakes up, calls an exorcist, is terrified, looks for a ghost. The other guy doesn't believe in ghosts. Knock in the night, goes back to sleep. It's the belief in the ghost that gives it the power. If I don't believe in depression, I believe in feeling depressed. Sure, we're humans, we have emotions. Sometimes we feel depressed, sometimes we feel happy. I don't believe in the idea of becoming a 
depressed person who has depression. I don't believe in that. I don't think that's possible for me. So if I don't believe in it, how can it happen? Okay, again, I think that's spoken to somebody who doesn't have depression. So I don't have depression either, but there are certainly people who are manic depressives, right? That's an actual mental condition where people go from absolute mania to absolute depression. Now, one of the things that, that he is saying that I generally agree with is that very often depression should be overcome with cognitive behavioral therapy, right? That's actually what he's talking about there. How shameful, how shameful for YouTube dad Ben Shapiro to mislead his babies like that, saying that the Romanian pimp was actually talking about cognitive behavioral therapy. Have you no shame, Ben Shapiro, as a YouTube dad, to mislead your babies who, who hang on your every word and to mislead them like that, that the Romanian pimp was talking about CBT this whole time? What a, what a, what a whopper, what a, what a lie. What a, it's just the sacred covenant between the YouTuber and, and his or her babies. How can you how can you lie like that? What's going on? I know I know we're all afraid of getting that <laughs> spanking for saying something negative about Andrew Tate, but this is like this is too far. This is this is insane what's going on here. Maybe he was maybe Andrew Tate was issuing a subtle critique of Sigmund Freud in that statement. I don't know if we dig dig, you know, far enough we're gonna find that shit, I think. Forgive me for going on a little tangent here, but I want to talk about sadness and depression. You see, depression is a clinical term that refers to a certain state of mind when you're paralyzed primarily, you don't want to live, you barely get out of your room, things like that. That's severe depression. Of course, there are milder depressions connected to that. Whereas sadness, unfortunately, has been completely and totally erased from our culture. Everything all the unpleasant phenomena that happens are now labeled by a clinical term depression. And I want to say that I have severely, I've been severely depressed in my life. However, when I had my little heart broken or when a relative of mine died, I felt profound sadness, but I was not depressed. And so I think that the medicalization of our day-to-day -day life, the medicalization of pain, of all pain is depression leads to a certain situation where a person says, oh, you know, I beat back my depression, I changed my work, I found a new lady friend, you know, but that you have beat sadness. You have, your life was unhappy because you didn't like your job, you didn't like your lady, you were sad, everything seems to have grinded to a halt, but the very fact that by changing behaviors, easily the depression go goes away could be indicated that this is sadness. Nobody says, I'm breaking up with somebody, I'm so sad. Everybody's going to say depressed, but it kind of m mixes things together. Like depression is a profound pain, but it's not the only type of pain. And, you know, like grief, like losing, losing a fr friend or a, a relative, you know, that is profound pain, but it doesn't have to be labeled depression. Because that, you know, and sometimes when people overcome depression, what they had was not depression to begin with. It, it was just normal sadness, a no, normal response to, um, to a difficult situation. So let's bring sadness back. And let's not l let, like, depre depressed people say that, you know, their pain is somehow elevated above all other human pain. You know, like... The gold standard should not be the depression. The gold standard should be recognizing sadness in some people and recognizing depression in others. If changing your job or moving somewhere, you know, cured your depression, chances are it wasn't a depression because a depression doesn't easily respond to behavior modifications. It takes, you know, months, you know, of therapy to, you know, dismantle depression. So I hope what I said made sense. So men are replacing genuine sexual relationships with just the computer screen and porn, and it's becoming a very, very big problem. And that's also exasperated by the fact that I think the sexual marketplace has become globalized. He says this with a straight face, which is amazing. Like the Romanian pimp, that's how he started out. That, that's how he made a lot of his money is through webcam girls. Like people who use um, porn, they just kind of rub off and they continue with the day. Whereas if you were a client, quote unquote, of the Romanian pimp, you know, this webcam girl would milk you for everything you had, thousands and thousands of dollars. 
you know. So it is really amazing. And actually, it's not amazing because he's obviously a psychopath. But just to sit there with Tucker Carlson, you can't cock the tuck Carlson and tell them with a straight face that, you know, internet sexuality is bad. It's, again, I want to say amazing, but it's not fucking amazing. He's just a fucking psychopath. I'm, I'm just noting, and I'm not amazed by this in any, in any form whatsoever. I've gone on my depression tangent. That was the peak of this video for me. And now I just have to fucking, you know, p paddle my way through the rest of this shit. <laughs> this is the thing I say to young men. A lot of men come to me with problems. And my only answer to them is masculine excellence. I don't mention webcam until after I've had sex with a girl. If you're on dates and you're trying to mention it and shit, it, it just doesn't work. It puts them off. I'd never do that. That's disgusting. I'm not a whore. Uh, it's just not gonna work. You continue as normal, no mention of webcam. You fuck the girl. After you fuck the girl, you do the PhD test. I say that in the world we live in today, being a normal man or below normal is gonna be terrible. You have to be an exceptional man because the sexual marketplace, especially even if you just want to find a wife, is globalized. If you, in 1955, if you met the hot girl in the Nebraskan town, she was the hot girl in the Nebraskan town. If you meet her today, she's being offered to go to Courcheval and go skiing in France and she's right. being offered to fly to Dubai. And there's millionaires who can just fly her anywhere and give her anything she wants. Dude, what the fuck are you talking about? What girls in Columbus, Ohio are being flown over to Dubai on any regular basis? What are we even talking about here? This is some sort of a crazy, a crazy world that, that we live in, that, that a person just says something that is so obviously false, and yet, you know, kind of can't cuck the tuck. Tucker is sitting there, you know, listening to this shit. I don't know. And, and who are you? Right? It's, it's getting harder and harder as a man to even find the most basic human function of re reproduction. Even to just find a woman you can reproduce with, it's becoming more and more difficult. You also couple that with the fact that they've destroyed morality in women also. So when you destroy the morality in men and you destroy how a man should act and then you destroy how a woman should act, it's, they're go you're both going in the opposite direction. Tips on raising daughters so they don't end up 304s, prostitutes, on the pole, OnlyFans, etc. Most men I know don't have daughters for these reasons. I'll chime in very quickly and I'll say, one, I have recruited, I think, although you've worked with a lot, more girls into, I guess, the adult entertainment industry than anyone else. I really have. And the one type of girl I couldn't recruit were girls with rich parents. Oh, do that for money. I don't need money. My family's rich. So when I see these broke boys on Twitter, and on Instagram, be like, oh, my daughter, I'm raising her right. And she's like nine years old, but he like works some crappy job. He's a wagey. I'm like, oh, she wants, she's going to get that Louis Vuitton purse one way or another. So you might want to level up your game and buy it for her, my G. Most women out there are very happy to share a man who's just rich and famous and they don't, they don't care. It's right? So, so, so if you're the normal guy, you know, there's, there's this rich, famous guy with 30 girls. That's 29 dudes who are lonely and they end up watching porn and, if you have a porn addiction or you have a problem with porn, you have a problem with yourself because I guarantee if you were the kind of man you're supposed to be, you would have no time for that and you wouldn't need it. Pimpy side. Okay, so I, everything he's saying here is true. Okay, well, every single, so I have a lot of quibbles with Andrew Tate. This is not one of them. Right, what, he, what he is saying here is absolutely true. The Romanian pimp is a complete degenerate. He lives a life of degeneracy. He can't have a normal relationship with a lady, whereas Andrew Tate's like model wife who fulfills all the requirements it doesn't she doesn't exist because he doesn't want to have a wife he presents a kind of a anti-social playboy persona who has multiple women doing the chores available for sex anytime uh, he desires and he spins this bullshit into some sort of a pro-social crap for conservatives who seem to eat it up like Ben Shapiro. One solution here is become more successful to the attractive girl is attracted to you as opposed to the millionaire 45 year old who's, who's got a wife. The other solution is inculcate from the time people are young a set of values in which men and women are meant to marry each other and raise children so that the values you're looking for in the other person are an important component of how you date and marry. Right, that's the part that I always feel like is missing in some of these conversations. Andrew Tate has been accused by three women in the United Kingdom of rape. He is now being accused of human trafficking in Romania. 
and I can't really listen to Ben Shapiro. I don't know if he dropped acid or what's going on. You know, this is a way to mislead your YouTube babies, but with this kind of garbage. Nobody knows what's going on anymore because of you, Ben Shapiro. Where, where, where are your masculine shoulders on which I built my family life? Ben Shapiro, what's, what's going on with you, dude? You know, there are certain things where I'm also suffering from a bit of audience capture. Like, there are certain things I don't like to discuss too much, but I might as well come out now. Um, I don't believe that Italians are white. It just happens to be. I don't care what science says. We talk about why men don't get married anymore. I can tell you why I wouldn't want to get married in America. I don't see the point in being married to a woman who's had so many partners before me that she can't properly pair bond with me and then giving her the opportunity to financially destroy me. I think that would be a bad chess move. I mean, again, everything he's saying is true. So he should get married and he should be monogamous and have kids. Because the union that, that actually provides all of this is the marital union. It is not, in fact, cam girls. So I'm, I'm, I, the, the, many of the things he's saying are absolutely right. As I've said before, I think that, that Andrew Tate's big gift is that Andrew Tate is very good at diagnosing problems. I think many of his solutions don't meet the test of the problem. Sometimes I sit here editing video, looking at different YouTube videos, etc., and I can't help but wonder if I'm going insane. Am I going batshit crazy here? And the exhibit A here is first Andrew Tate appears next to you can't cuck the tuck Carlson, and he says, I'm not getting married in America. I would never do it. It's a stupid thing to do. And then in a second appears Ben Shapiro and he says, 100% of everything he says is correct. You know, of course he would be, he, we should get married and have children in a nuclear family. Like what the fuck is going on? How do these, like am I, am I the only one noticing that one person is contradicting what the other one just said? I believe that there's a crisis of loneliness among men and the loneliness you feel toward the lady is more charged versus the loneliness you might feel because you don't have a male friend. And so what is generally, uh, I believe, to be a crisis of loneliness becomes a crisis of meeting a lady. And it doesn't matter that it's hard to meet a guy friend also. It doesn't matter. What it means to me is um, what, what's important is to meet a lady. And so now you have a kind of a plethora of choices of people who are explaining this. Do you have you you have Peterson, you have incel message boards, you have pickup artists, you have YouTube channels that are huge that neither of us have ever heard of, you know, kind of explaining women, explaining ladies at a rapid pace, analyzing ladies, saying what ladies want and what they should want and so on. But underneath it all is the loneliness. And, you know, if, if we had more opportunities to meet different people in real life, we wouldn't spend our time looking up to a degenerate pimp, basically. Some folks are on, um, on a simpler end of intelligence. And I hate, I hate saying it that way, but, you know, and to them, kind of this cartoonish masculinity really, really um, appeals. There's something to that, you know, renting a jet for a photo shoot, you know, walking around there with sunglasses and whatever, a mansion in Romania. Uh, who, who, which one of us doesn't want to live that, that life? Um, all right, my friends, I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say anymore. Be well.